Starting. All right. And we're live. I hope. Yeah. We are. <laughs> Yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting the notification, so <laughs> same here. It works. <clears throat> so I would suggest while we're waiting, we have a drink. Come on. How old is this one? It smells very good. It doesn't have nature, I think. So three years. Hey, Philip, thanks for joining us. You can read it. Yeah, ah, there. Hi, Philip. On notebook, it's a little bit delayed. <clears throat> I'm just checking if it's possible. No, it's not possible to highlight. The last stream, when was it? Three weeks ago, four Three weeks, weeks ago. Three weeks, yeah. Three weeks ago. We did it on StreamYard, and then you can always highlight the clips, but I recognize that if you uh, schedule a live stream on StreamYard, it doesn't show up in the subscription feed. And yeah, that's why I, cho I chose to do it this time with the streaming functionality of YouTube. Philip is asking what we think about the new Harley Benton DC go to go to series. <clears throat> I need to check it out because I have no opinion. <laughs> Yes. Did you see it? I haven't <laughs> seen it. Uh, I'm not also, also not in the market for one because Harley we Benton. have the we both have gifted one to Lucas, the DC Junior. I'll grab it in a second. Yeah. The Roto the very blue one <clears throat> that was a limited edition. But it looks ah yeah it, it, it's more like yeah it's an SG shape. Yep. Right? Yep, it looks like an SG. Do you mean <laughs> that one? I haven't seen it before, but it looks like uh yeah, that's the one kind of right okay. Looks a bit like not like the custom because it doesn't have the block inlays and the and the three but uh, three pickups that as well so dc that's the only harley bentner i got and as martin said he gifted it to me and it was a <laughs> awesome present because it's also the only guitar i have now in my possession with a p90 pickup and this one is special. It's not longer. It's no longer the Roswell. Yeah. It's a Gibson P90, so it really sings. Yeah. So extremely. That we've, that we've put inside of the housing. I could get two Gibson P90s uh, in the soap bar form. Uh, fairly, yeah, good for a really good price. And yeah, I've decided to buy one for Lucas and one for myself and insert that one into the uh, yeah, into the dog ear housing of the of the Roswell pickups and the Roswell pickup is stacked. It's or? a stacked one, yeah. So there was enough room and we just had to glue it to the plastic yeah. cover, but exactly works perfectly. Cheers! Cheers. Smells really good. Cheers. Mm. What we've wanted to talk about today is Lucas and I, we've found out that we have a very different kind of gas. We have, we spend approximately <laughs> the same on gear, but our distribution is very different. Yeah. You, you're talking about the, the sweet spot of yeah, where our it's... gear. Yeah, that's interesting. We both... Oh, hey, Ben Coombs is hey, ben. here as well. Thanks hey, for joining. Um, we I'm have a... an VIP here. 
Absolutely. That's <laughs> great. Yeah, Ben, we just started to talk about the, our, our disease, the gas. Yeah. And I made an overview mm -hmm. of all my guitars and amps and just an estimate of my pedals because I have 50 pedals and <laughs> can't remember all the prices. Yeah. And yeah, the then Martin and I, we compared the sums or the totals uh, of, of our gear. And then we found out that Martin has... Yeah, he's more on the extremes. He has yeah. more affordable guitars and much more expensive guitars and amps, especially in, in the amp category with your JTM. Yeah, that's hand-wired yeah. and special custom. custom cap for that one. And my most expensive amp is the Angle Iron Ball, and <clears throat> it's not that expensive. Yeah. It's it's currently roughly eight hundred euros. Still not. Yeah, not cheap or not affordable, it's, but it's made in Germany and there's an awesome amp. And there will be a body review about the Iron Ball soon. Yeah. It's already filmed, but yeah, not, not published yet. Yeah, Ben says he's the same as me. <laughs> as all the extremes. Yeah. Your What's your most expensive guitar, the 3-3? Th uh, three, three? The right. most expensive is obviously my Martin. Acoustic, yeah. right? Acoustic. That's that's pretty expensive. Yeah. What, four and a half K in euros, right? Four thousand. If you if you buy nowadays, it's new, nowadays, nowadays, yeah. yeah. That's, Three eight was it back then. Still. I think my most guitar overall is the uh, American Professional Two. I think that was around eighteen hundred. Yeah. So about the same price as your Gibson. Yeah. I have barely any guitar that's untouched at home. That's also if you, if you don't include strap pins. Yeah, that thing that's the that's same. That's this one's untouched. Maybe you, can you grab it, dive on this? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. Speaking about gas or the the main topic of today's live stream. This is my newest acquisition. When did I get it? A month. One and a half months I ago. Think, I think it's not even a month. Did you have it already with the last live stream? Yeah. You I have? think so. Yeah, then I think it's I bought it a about month. a month ago or so. Yeah. I definitely don't need this guitar, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. We both saw it in a shop in May. I think it was May or June when we were at Addis Guitars. It was June. It was, yeah, it was June. And what really got me was this amazing neck some people don't like heavy roasted necks but i think it's it feels fantastic and it's an rg and has a wizard three neck and i didn't know and the 16 inch radius so it's really flat by far the most uh or, or the flattest radius of all my guitars and yeah i, I was really surprised that i like 16 inch radius but it just feels or it plays effortlessly. Is that how you say it? No, I think so. Without effort. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it feels like shredder guitar. I'm not a shredder per se. I like heavy music from time to time, but my technical skills are not good enough. But with this guitar, you can definitely play or you play differently than with a seven and a quarter radius. And yeah, it's it's light, it's a S type. Yeah. So it really, yeah, fits yeah. my style. There's there's something that's also different with us. But first, uh, Snuff King TV has joined us. Puninja has joined us. Welcome, hey guys! Thanks for joining us. Yeah, one thing I've noticed with a comment I think Rusty was it where he said he was in for a new Road One. I think 50s or 60s, so just a Winterra Road Worn Strat. Yeah. yeah, you said you already have a lot of great Strats. He, he has a wonderful Custom shop. Yeah, he has a yeah. wonderful Strat uh, that sounds amazing. And I was asking him, well, you have already one. And you guys, uh, you and Rusty agreed on you can't have enough S-type guitars. That's something for me that's also very different. I think you you have two S-type guitars. I have two, but... And just I, one semi-hollow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. No, two. The 339 as well, the Epic. Yeah. But that one is also not intended for myself. Mm -hmm. I need to get the chat as well. Yeah, I can't look that far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't have my contacts in as well, so I have to get really close. Um, yeah, for me, I think of a guitar with a purpose and having two very similar guitars is not something I really aspire to. So I'm also thinking about letting go of my classic vibe. Yeah, but those are both strats with single coils. Yeah. And my strats are all different-ish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's you thing. need to justify it. That's part of the guess, <laughs> I guess. My American Professional has HSS configuration. Then the Squire, the modded Squire is for, for my kids. It's intended for my daughter. Yeah. The Road War has three single coils. And yeah, the Ibanez, it's not really a thread. It's an RG. It's a different shape. Yeah. It's just a thread-ish. Uh, and the AZ, yeah, that's also uh, to humbucker. Yeah. And yeah. also has roasted maple, stainless steel. So it also has a lot of different features that Fender guitars typically don't have. But yeah. Well, that's one point Poo Ninja. He says, <laughs> one super awesome guitar and one super cheap copy to smash on stage. Yeah. That's indeed the point. I also, my super amazing guitar, my Martin, mm -hmm. I have a Harley Benton clone that I'm using for outdoors. Um, it's the same guitar, basically, right? It's basically the same guitar. It has almost the same specs. Well, yeah, it's not obviously the same quality of material, not the same build quality, but it has the same kind of Wii neck. It has it's an old model that has... It has also the volute, right? And the yeah. tuners look the same. So the tuners look the same. It looks very, very similar. Mm -hmm. uh, it has also a scalloped X bracing. It has the Sitka sprue stop. It has the rosewood back and sides with yeah. a solid, solid... How much was that one? 250 euros. Harley Bentner, really affordable. Yeah, and... With the mahogany neck, it does not have the the ebony fretboard. I think that one is also rose slightly, but yeah, but that's about <clears throat> it for for differences. And it yeah. plays really similar. And you would never take your mouth into a campfire, no, because not if that. anything gets spilled on it or uh, yeah, fire or whatever. Yeah. No way. The the point uh, Puninja raises with a cheap copy to smash, something just came uh, came to my mind. Uh, we were talking about Gary Clark Jr., right? Yeah. And he uses a lot of Epiphones. I, yep. I, I don't think he wants to smash them, but using affordable guitars that you can replace easily is for, for a gigging musician, is a or touring musician, not just gigging, yeah. for a touring musician. It's really great because if you have a special one of a kind custom shop and if that one breaks, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. difficult to replace that. When I you're think on tour. I've seen uh, an interview of him where he was somewhere, I think, South <coughs> America, Brazil, or somewhere, and he was talking about just that. That he had uh, just an FP 335, I think, I think, adopted mm -hmm. with him. And yeah, the interviewer asked him what's about this yeah rather affordable epi, and he said, "Well, if something breaks or it gets stolen, he can pre get pretty much the same guitar in another store, um, yeah. rather effortlessly, and his gear will sound pretty much the same." And I think that's a good point. Absolutely. Hey, Lawrence. Thanks for joining. Another VIP. Full of VIPs, Ben, oh, Pooh Ninja, Lawrence. I, I think I have to get something <laughs> now. One moment. What, what are you picking up now? Uh, mm. the, the, the tone the, took. The, the tone took. Yeah. <laughs> it's always here. So. It's 
already cold here in Austria. <laughs> <laughs> Martin is wearing his toque. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it got colder here, and it's yeah, always with me. Larry <laughs> and yeah. Philip also asked, what is our dream guitar? Electric guitar, I guess uh, electric. Yeah. I'm not, I don't play that much acoustic, so I just go to electric. <sighs> Actually, I'm pretty happy with the guitars I have. If it's like you get 10K for free to spend and, and get, go to a music store and go crazy. The first guitar that came to my mind is the Tremonti, <laughs> the original PRS Tremonti. Um, a local music shop has one, and I think the build quality is it's just perfect. It's absolutely flawless, but it's not a straight shape. <laughs> That's the problem. No, um, yeah, I'm, I'm basically I'm absolutely happy with my guitars, and yeah, I haven't played that many uh, custom shop strats, so. Maybe there are also some magical ones. And we have to say the ones we've played in that local shop that has them. The uh, condition the, ones. Yeah. Mixed. Also, the, the custom shop Gibsons there were actually not good to play at all. So, yeah, we were really disappointed that that day trying all these custom shop guitars. For me, well, with acoustic, I think I've got mine. Yeah, that it would be really hard to top that Martin that yeah. I'm having. Um, maybe if I get across one with a similar V-shaped neck, mm -hmm. that one might click more or that is sounding slightly fuller. But then again, that's it's futile. I don't. If you can't hear the difference when they're not right next to each other, is it really worth it? Probably not. That's that's the next thing. So, and, uh, and I'm not that good of a player that that it really matters anyway. Mm. So, <clears throat> yeah, with electrics, it is also really hard to beat my three three five. Did you play more expensive three 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 fives? Yeah. Okay. I've played a few, yeah, the standard ones. Mm -hmm. I didn't never play a custom shop one though. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that studio <coughs> just it's an affordable Gibson, mm -hmm. but yeah, modified with the uh, with the Jimmy Page wiring. It's just an amazing guitar to play and, and versatile. As versatile well. sounds great. Mm -hmm. Eventually. Yeah, if I would get, if I would have the money and would get across it, an old three three five eventually. Sixties or yeah, know, early sixties, early sixties, late fifties. But I don't really see the need currently. Actually, I'm really yeah lacking in gas. Actually, there's nothing really that's sparks that I would need something new yeah that's great in, in terms of guitars yeah. <laughs> Puninch is guessing for a black pier and I think Philip would also take one but a white relic vintage fender with a neck humbucker with the pickup ring vintage not affordable yeah absolutely Gibson ES175 for Ben I need to Google that one. I'm not 100% sure. Body. Full hollow. I think so, yeah. I've never seen and one. And then single cut, I think. Ah, yeah, yeah it's really like chess mm. box. Would be Krenner's guitar. Yeah. Ah, yeah. The <laughs> one Floyd Rose guitar for every possible tuning. <laughs> Says Poo. <laughs> yeah, that would be really handy. <laughs> I don't have a single guitar with Floyd Rose because I'm too scared because everybody says it's horrible and yeah I don't know if I can I, if I can handle it 
Lawrence, 92 to 94, Gibson Les Paul Custom in Tobacco Sunburst. Ooh, that sounds fantastic. Why 92 to 94? What's You've got the... one. Ah. ah. You know for a fact or I just, think, just a guess? I think it's a guess, but okay. I think he has. Yeah, that would make sense then. Yeah. I don't have a Floyd Rose guitar at all. No, no, I have many guitars with tremolo that don't use it that much, so no need. But it would make fun. Yeah. Oh, uh, Puninja, mm -hmm. do you know the? Let me check. The I have the Whammy DT. Uh, it's like this size, huge pedal, and you can. It's the Whammy, but also the uh, the D tuner. I think it's D tuner. Did you take? It's you can also get yeah. it as a separate pedal. That one's fantastic for different tunings. I just get it. If you wanna change tunings, I like this one a lot because you can down tune pretty easily. If you have a guitar in drop D and the song, I, I just played a Slipknot tune uh, uh, lately, and yeah, just three semitones down, and that's it. And the, the, the strings don't get floppy. <laughs> so that's a really nice pedal. Lauren says he has a 94 black custom. Oh. And he has good info that early 90s were some of the best made. That's great. What would be special would be to have a guitar that was made in your birth year. But I don't know if late 80s guitar are any good. No idea. And I have enough guitars. <laughs> that as well. But talking about gas, what's your newest acquisition, Martin? Yeah, well, it's... <laughs> you can see it in the back. It's, it's not exactly hidden. <laughs> My newest acquisition is a box AC-15. With the... Uh, yeah. It's the C1 combo, and yeah, I got it for yeah a really good price. It was bought in June, so it's <laughs> not even half a year old, and I paid 390 euros for it. And new, it's 600 euros. Yeah, something about this, oh. a little bit more. Yeah, well, it looks, it looks, it looks like, like it's in mint condition. There's nothing. Yeah, yeah. scratches. Yeah, I think it's a good addition to my JTM and yeah, it has a little bit more clean headroom as well. And yeah, on the same day, I've got something else back. We've got it also here because we just shot a video today about the plucking service on that one. Hold it like this. Yeah, now you can see the great finish. Yeah, looks so nice, the green. I don't have a green guitar. That's another reason <laughs> to get a guitar, right? <laughs> I would guess so, yeah. Oh no, my wife would kill me. <laughs> Lawrence also loves the AC-15. Yeah, I think it's the clean sounds are really awesome. And Martin, you have to try some of Lawrence's pedal with it. Yeah. I just have one bag there. Oops. Yeah, I have. You have more. Quite a stack. I just got one of these. Martin ordered two, so I got one as well. Combustible lemon. Yeah, we need, definitely need to try it as a pedal platform. Yeah. Ben wrote 1974 wasn't the best year for guitars. Yeah, 70s guitar that got a bad reputation. A, a bad reputation. Except, except for Japanese ones. Yeah, Japanese are. Are there any bad years for Japanese guitars? That's the next thing. I only heard good things about them. Yeah, but hmm. that's that's one thing. Yeah, <laughs> are there really any bad Japanese years? I wouldn't know. They're so meticulous with their work. So Ibanez's, yeah, Philip. They're 
so far my uh experiences with Ivan's guitar were all great and I don't even have a Japanese one. <laughs> I just have the two made in Indonesia, the Archie and the AZ Premium is also made in Indonesia and the uh, AS153, the semi hollow that's made in China. Six is made in Japan stuff was low end, not great, says Ben. Uh, maybe that was the, the beginning, the, the copy years or yeah. what's it called this period? Yeah, the lawsuit era, lawsuit era. Lawsuit era when they copied all the guitars. Mm. I have a Japanese guitar actually. It's my Takamini, my dreadnought. That's made right. in Japan. Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. <clears throat> Back. But I would love to play the some some Fender made in Japan stuff because they always have these crazy guitars that are hardly available anywhere else. Yeah. You can yeah. see them on Troglis channel a lot. He's getting them. He has a guy who imports it for him yeah, or sends it to him. And they they are they have crazy models. And and some uh yes like special runs with uh, evangelion the, the manga series yeah. or anime series the final fantasy guitar crazy stuff pre-lawsuit ibanez were really good better than the original in a lot of instances probably much cheaper yeah there are currently also in our local used market a few of those yeah, there's a guy selling some uh, Les Paul shapes. Yeah, right? and there's cheese. Tokai as well? Uh, or the other brands? I think other brands. I, think I would have to look it up. That, that was also really tempting for me at, at some time. Really? Yeah. But then you got this one. Yeah, instead. And, and the... got, got my kit guitar. guitar. Yeah. yeah. Plaked with stainless steel frets and... Favorite guitar player? You go first, I need to think. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me it's favorite. For me it's closer. Philip says he's his is Paul Gilbert. Yeah, he's I, I really like his sound. It's very melodic. And he can play anything. Yeah, Even pretty much any style. Yeah. My favorite guitarist. It's really for me, it's it's a close call between Clapton and BB King. Yeah, I would just say for you, it must be Clapton. It's yeah, for probably me, Clapton. For me, I'm, I'm not sure. It's not. I know he's not the best player, but somehow I like his playing and the sound he's getting from his guitars. Yeah, especially the Cream era, love that stuff. And yeah, obviously Chameas and the Blues Breakers, the Bino album is simply amazing. Yeah. I would have to go by genre. Have a great day, Lawrence. Thanks for joining us. Bye, Lawrence. I would have to go by genre. It's like favorite blues guitarist because or favorite rock and metal guitarist it's because otherwise take. it's really hard for me. When it comes to blues sound, I really like John Mayer. Yeah. His new album is yeah. It, <clears throat> It's, it's the opinions are mixed, but I like his sound. I like Continuum. I, I love that album actually. I really like the sound of Jimi Hendrix and copies of Jimi Hendrix or players that are inspired by Jimi Hendrix, like John Frusciante from Red Hot Chili Peppers. And yeah. that's the sound I really like. And when it comes to heavier sounds, Mark Tremonti is, uh, yeah, definitely uh, an idol for me. Hey Charles, thanks for joining us. Charles, always busy. Hey, glad you made it. And he's probably our most faithful commenter. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, yeah. Thanks for that. Thanks a lot. Poo Ninja wrote Zach, Zach Wild or Steve Vai. Yeah, Tim Hansen. His playing is just something different. It's, yeah. it's I, I really listen a lot to Polyphia when I'm working because when I have to concentrate, um, I don't like vocals. So Polyphia is just perfect for me to have in the background when I'm working. And I can really focus on work when I have some instrumental music in the background. And sometimes it's Paul Gilbert, sometimes it's uh, Joe Triani, and sometimes it's mm -hmm. Polyphia. So 
great yeah. guitarist, but great songs. It, I think it's amazing how they're making their compositions. Yeah, it's, it's it's really something different. They work it out. I've heard on the p piano, and really? then yeah, and H then Tim Henson plays piano. They, I just think he he played violin when he was a kid. What I've what I've heard piano is they are well. they are working it out on piano, and then are thinking how can they manage to get this on a on a guitar. Okay. Yeah, and they are inspired a lot by hip hop sounds as well. Yeah. I usually don't listen to hip hop music; <clears throat> it's not my my cup of tea. And <laughs> Iomi, yeah, Black Sabbath. It's also a great sound. There are so many great players. I think naming just one doesn't do justice to others. No, I think it's it's also the mix. I would need to check my Spotify playlist to see what what artists I, I listen to. But sometimes it's just great music, but the guitarist is not like the center of attention. Yeah, I'm, I'm and sometimes checking. the music doesn't need that much of a fancy player. Yeah. It's also, yeah, an art to be, yeah, take yourself in the background. Definitely. At least, yeah, I, I just listened to Alice in Chains recently. I also like, what's his first name? Cantrell. Uh, help me out, chat. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. He just got his uh, red custom. Uh, out, I'm sure Puninja knows. Thank you, sister. Cherry, Cherry Cantrell, yeah. And I like that sound a lot too. Yeah, Cherry. Scott LePage is great too. Yeah, he's the second guitarist. Yeah, they're both amazing and they have great signature guitars, mm -hmm. which brings us back to <laughs> the main topic. Uh, I have an AC and I the AC guitars are awesome. I always um i think before i bought my az there was the video out by phil phil mcknight and he had a japanese one and the indonesian one yeah. and then he decided to keep his uh, premium so the indonesian one and they have the same one it's the yeah. tequila sunrise looks like a cocktail and yeah it's i i like it a lot it's it's the neck is just awesome the roasted maple and the stainless steel frets yeah. You know what I'm talking about, stainless steel frets, they're just awesome feeling. My metal wrap it, show up also my windows. <laughs> Let me wrap it. <laughs> Tilly Jones Classic has been secured. That pickup. Yes. So Charles, do you have the real filtertrons or do you have the humbucker size? TV Jones classics. The ones in the 339 the are 339 are the uh, no are the humbucker size. Humbucker size ah, yeah. Okay. The just Fittertron <clears throat> design. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's it's a mixture, actually, because the, the base plate obviously has the size of a of a humbucker. So it's yeah. it's not a real filtertron, but voiced like one. Yeah. So you you don't have anything on your watch list at the moment? At the moment, not. I was also uh, looking at. Do you remember what what this amp was? I'm looking at Laney. Laney, yeah. Was it the Laney Lionheart? Laney Lionheart. I was looking at that one before. Yeah. The box showed up, and that one also. Uh, I found that one really interesting. I have never played. Laney. Same here. Well, they're also British. Yeah. But are they their own thing or are they Marshally or Voxy? <clears throat> uh, that one, the Lionheart had two channels also. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm not actually not really sure, but it was there for a really good price as well. And yeah. It was fair I was fairly tempted by that one to just Try something that's not that mainstream. Yeah. Yeah, the, new... the box is more mainstream, definitely. 
Yeah, it's more did known. Did you find this one? Sorry. Did you find this one for yourself or did I send you the link? You sent me the link. So it was my fault. Yeah, it was your fault. Okay. Definitely. I can, I can I, blame you. I, and I can live with that. <laughs> it's it's my, in my basement now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Other than that, what really was tempting me, you know it, uh, we had in that local shop that we've visited mm -hmm. that resonate to guitar. The How old National was that again? Resophonics from 1938 or something. Was, like was it 38? I think it was 38. More than 80 years old. Yes. And that one, I should have just. I did not dare to ask for the price back then. I, I'm not sure how much it. Two thousand five hundred. It was sold. Two, and two five, okay. I was I was looking at. You played online. it, right? You yeah, played I it. played it. I, uh, when I was playing the Ibanez, was yeah. it then? Okay. This this guitar was really amazing mm -hmm. from start to finish. But it so it was not an impulse buy. You didn't just pull out the credit card and buy it. No, uh, but because I thought my wife would cut my head off if I come home with a 2,500 euro guitar without uh, discussing it with her first. Uh, and, and where would you put your tone tool on then? Yeah. Without a head. <laughs> Speaking of cutting head off, what's your opinion on headless guitars? <laughs> what a transition. <laughs> I have only played a headless guitar when I started playing guitar once. Never since? Never since. I did not like it at all back then, but also, obviously, uh, I did not have really much skill, neither do I have now. But um, yeah, back then it was really, yeah, it just did not feel right for me. Yeah. Especially when playing in the beginning these cowboy chords and yeah. you know you know how i'm grabbing the, the guitar over here uh and have yeah really the thumb always uh a lot up here where i really felt the end of the guitar with this so yeah. that thing irritated me mm -hmm. i think if, if you get used to it probably i should try one yeah, Keith from Freyford World has a couple of headless guitars, the yeah. Swedish ones, Stradberg. Yeah. Uh, I think they look cool. They're very much not traditional looking. But I played a mayonnaise one, the high end made in Poland, I think, made in Poland. And it was a similar experience in yours. It just it's such a small and compact size, you definitely need to get used to it. But it's also very light and yeah, ergonomic, ergonomical. But I don't know, it's not really my cup of tea. Again, Philip is asking for how long we are playing. Uh, six years. Yeah, a little, six, little bit more. A little bit more years. than six years, yeah. That's right. And electric about five years but yeah it's the advantage when you start earlier you don't um, usually you have less responsibilities and have <laughs> probably more free time to play than when you're having a family uh, you're having two kids i'm having one kid at the moment and uh, a lot a lot of work so it's i mean it's it's easier to get practice time in at least for me you're i think you're playing more than me I was playing a lot in my first year, especially in my first half year, because, uh, well, I have to get around everything I've played when I was a kid yeah. and one year. And yeah, classical guitar. So this year with music school, you get forced to classical guitar. And, and sight reading. Yeah, yeah sight reading is, is not the problem. No, that's but not that much fun when you're a kid. Yeah, but that was that was never an issue. Okay, uh, that was not the problem. I just simply did not play the music that I like. And that was the main killer for me. And yeah, so obviously I quit. Uh, then football. What, what, what made you 
get back to guitar. It was my son again. He found a guitar at a friend of my wife. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he was really into it. And so I thought, well, I've played once for a year. I could try it again. Now I can afford an electric guitar and can do what I want. And started playing electric guitar. And yeah, my mom noticed this and said, well, now that you can play, she was, she had her wedding half a year later. <laughs> You can play at my wedding, can't you? As I a was, beginner. As a beginner. And I was like, well, don't put your hopes up too much, but I'll try. And yeah, I was really focused on this. I've played until my fingers bled, really, literally. Yeah, really. when you're a beginner, you don't have calluses. I had, or... I, I, I super glued my fingers up for the wedding. <laughs> it doesn't sound healthy. Not at or all. like it, a good idea. It it was really hurting a lot. Mm. Um, I've played at least each day three hours in the okay. evening. Okay, that's extreme. Really every day. Yeah. I did not take one day break at all. And yeah, I've played their medley of uh, yeah, wonderful tonight and Layla. Mm -hmm. The acoustic version yeah. and because it was the second wedding of my mom so it was a little bit yeah of a joke <laughs> that we that we put Leila in there um, and my sister was singing she's really amazing singer um, also started to become an opera singer and yeah unfortunately she had problems with her um tonal chords oh with okay. the vocal chords and uh, could not continue this mm. and yeah and from brian adams heaven okay those were the two or three songs played there nice including the solos that have also worked out by ear i've did a live solo there <laughs> From uh, and how long have you been playing back then? Half a year. Half a year. Half a year. <laughs> <laughs> that was I really I really put a lot of effort in it and also started then playing a lot finger style mm -hmm. afterwards because I was playing alone. Yeah. And yeah, started with a lot from lick and riffs, uh, finger style arrangements that you also may have heard on our channel. A few of those, the road. Hit the road check, mm. Eye of the Tiger. I've also, yeah, I think after close to one year, I've played also the uh, Bohemian Rhapsody one. <laughs> Fairly decent, actually, mm -hmm. if I may say so myself. Yeah. Um, including the opera part, the last part I did actually never learn. I should do that at some point. And generally get back to this when i start playing the first thanks year... ben have a good one bye ben yeah he before he leaves he also mentioned he was playing two years of classical guitar in high school and his sister amanda uh is also the better singer in the family yeah and philip has been playing for four years acoustic and almost four years electric as well that's great. Yeah, the first year of my playing was just playing acoustic. And I think that's not too bad if you like acoustic, because the, you get a lot of strength in your hand and your fingers. If you nail the bar chords, the E-shaped e bar chords on uh, an acoustic guitar with the, the string tension, tension and the usually higher action, then it's, uh, yeah, it's a breeze on electric guitar. And yeah. Then, but since yeah, I, I moved then to electric guitar and I only rarely play acoustic nowadays. So yeah, it's, it's hanging there in the back. But yeah, sometimes I play some uh, acoustic grunge tunes, but then I, I always have to tune the guitar to E flat. It's <laughs> a hassle. <laughs> Yeah, 
yeah, but let's get back a little bit to modding, I think. Modding? Shouldn't we? Is that also part of gas? I think it's kind also, of, right? It's also kind of gas. Yeah. You want something new on your guitar and you start modding something. It's definitely, well, not always, but it's it might be less expensive <laughs> than buying new stuff all the time. If you really like your guitars. Yeah, and... And it makes fun. <laughs> Not bad, Philip, in one month. A fabric top. Yeah, I've seen that one on Dan's stream. That one looks amazing, Charles. What does it look I'm like? For what, what kind of fabric? That's... I will, I will show you later on. Okay, yeah. Uh, ben, ben shows a picture in the stream. That's and cool. That one is, is really cool. It's blue and with a... Are these white leaves or something like this on top of it? So blue and white. Blue paisley. Blue Paisley. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Philip. I'm, we're really sorry for that one. We do this more frequently, unfortunately, because okay. for some reason the YouTube algorithm doesn't take up the video as a short at some times. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't go to the. Feed. Yeah, it, it does not go in the short feed. It does not. Yeah. It simply does not work. And. Uh, when we see this, we sometimes re-upload uh, the videos. Yeah. Uh, so really sorry for you guys who are, who are watching this two times. Uh, yeah, yeah it's, uh, I uploaded it uh, yesterday morning and I scheduled it like four hours later. And we've noticed that when you schedule a, a short video, it usually doesn't go or so far, it never went to the shorts feed. And of course, we want uh, to get some views on the videos because we put some effort in. And uh, that's why we decided to re-upload it today and hope for the best. Maybe now it gets a little bit more views. Yeah, well, Charles is, is the poor soul that is <laughs> watching our videos three times, I guess. That's awesome. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Ninja plays acoustic when it takes out the dog. <laughs> Twice, maybe. So you're times. you're sitting somewhere outside and you're playing the acoustic, or do you have a strap? <laughs> How does that work with the dogs? Other than that, it's electric. Yeah, for me too. Yeah, but <laughs> modding, I think, is also a kind of gas. Um, if you're looking for something specific, yeah, if you're looking for something specific and you, yeah, like, oh, I'm going with a project, I want to do this and want to do that and this, and yeah, yeah it sums up also quite a lot. And I think I want to tackle a comment we had mm -hmm. on a video recently. Okay. No one was asking you about the Tremonti that you've put the American pickups in it. Ah, the, the comment from a couple of days ago. Yeah. yeah. And he was asked, he said he likes the pickups in his guitar. I get the guitar. Is he, if he's missing out on something. And I think it's very important to say that this one. if you like a pickup or something, don't, don't, change it. It. don't change it. Don't get tempted by any video be it ours or someone else's to change it just for the changing to the sake of changing it. Uh, thinking you're missing out on something. If you clearly hear something, oh, I don't like this in this guitar. Something is missing there. I don't want it to be like this. Um, then make a change. But I would never recommend someone who is asking like this, um, Am I missing out on something to change your pickups if, if if you think they're totally fine? That's yeah. Yeah, and I think his point was also that 
he's got the 2021 model, so uh, yep. he bought it new uh, one month ago. Uh, the SE come with the Trimonti S pickups, and the S pickups are made in Asia, so in Indonesia now. And this one was, uh, or yeah, was made in Korea, and it's 2018 model, and also already had the Trimonti S pickups. And yeah, they're good. They're quite aggressive sounding. They're high output pickups. But I, uh, yeah, I just wanted the, the real Trimonti pickups. And also because of the looks, silly, silly gas. It's not that I didn't like the sound of the old ones, but I just thought these must sound better. And they look better, in my opinion, <laughs> chrome plated. And yeah, it's just this design here. And I also wanted, yeah, modding is fun. Yeah. And I also wanted to make this one to be as close to an American. And that's why I also made a video about this guitar and talking about the modifications. Put locking tuners on, but these are not the American ones because they're <laughs> too expensive. <laughs> these are the SE locking tuners, but they look pretty much the same from the front, from the back. They don't because they don't have the open gear. But this guitar is also kind of special because it is uh, the Stealth series that was only released in Europe, I think. And it has a satin top and quilted maple. And yeah, for that, it's pretty special. I just think it looks cool. Uh, it certainly does. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> ah, they're talking about it. walking yeah. the dogs. <laughs> Yeah, and speaking of modding, um, for those who don't know yet, uh, Lass, Music Therapy Lass, has invited me to his stream this Sunday. In the evening? Or in Europe? In Europe. In, uh, in Pacific time, it's 10, 10 a.m. 9.30. Or 9.30. Ah, Not yeah, sure you said it's half past six here. Half past six here, yeah. yeah. 6.30 p.m. European, Central European time. Are there any other guests coming to his stream? Or uh, is it just uh, This time, I think it's just the two of us, as far as I know. That's cool. Usually, we have Johnny Bean on his live stream as well. Yeah. But this time, it's it's me. So, Do you shameless know? promotion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Promotion so for, for less uh, yeah. stream. <laughs> yeah. So it's I'm really excited about this. That's the first invitation. Yeah, it's cool. Got. And what project are you going to talk about with him? Guitars, amps, both. We'll see. But you didn't you didn't mod your amps yet. No, not really. really. I've opened my JTM once. And uh, I've put yeah. in there. When it was defective. No, uh, I've opened it to add uh, this tube retainer mm -hmm. on top of it to get less vibration on. Ah, the, yeah, that was the rattling. Tube. Yeah, there was there was quite some rattling True. on it. Um, yeah, that one. I've for that one. I've opened it. I've made. Um, yeah, you bought Some... something to put on the tube. Yeah, yeah, that's the the, the tube dampener, the, yeah, the dampener, right? The, um, the tube retainer with the springs and mm. uh, on top of to it, hold it in place, hold it more in place. And for that, I had to open all the JTM and had to, yeah, build some, yeah, stick <laughs> with. A, with a resistor to drain all the capacitors so it could put safe go safely inside but that's how far i've went with amps so far but when it comes to guitar modding you i'm pretty sure including my guitars you've modded more than 10 guitars yes, probably certainly. or certainly certainly it's certainly more than 10 guitars and very complex wiring yeah i i always I'm having a neck for having some yeah, strange wiring everywhere. I'm not sure if the Jimmy Page or the 50s wiring are strange. Are they? The 50s wiring isn't strange. That, that one's not strange. The Jimmy Page wiring is a lot. And this one is 
probably the most crazy wiring is that it? I've ever made. Yeah. Is it not Jimmy Page? No, it no. Two, two, two volume, two tone for that. I have two volume and two tone. That one is way easier because it's separated on several pots, several push pull pots. On here, I'm having coil split. And here I have the face switch. Everything just for both pickups on just these two push pulls is crazy mess of wire inside of the cavity. So it's really close. Every pin there is is used, and yeah, that's that was some really hard work. But. When Martin played this guitar before through the AC-15, it, it, there was, you, you can get a really jangly single coil sound with this yeah. guitar and it has classic 57 and a Gibson classic and, 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 a, and, a, and a plus. And a plus in the bridge, yeah. yeah. But it didn't sound like a humbucker at all with out of phase and splitting, it was. Yeah, the, without the phase and splitting, it gets crazy, crazy, really jangly sound. Yeah. sound it's, yeah. Man, it's really cool. I really like that. No, Philip, I haven't watched this or heard the song from Nick Johnson. Is it good? Hopefully it is. I need to check it out. Keep one hand in your pocket when working around high voltage. Definitely. Yeah. I wouldn't dare. Almost, always just with one hand and the probe that is draining the, the current from the capacitors. And yeah, then I've First, drained everything, then measured everything again with one hand and with a clamp. And when everything really was at zero, wherever I put mm -hmm. that thing, then I've started to work on it. Okay. Yeah. I wouldn't really dare to touch the insides of an amp. He shaved his beard. Wow. So he can go unknown in public. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah, so I'm really looking forward to that. To the live stream? Yeah. Yeah, me too. I'm wondering what, what questions he's asking me. Yeah. Do you think it will be interview type? Uh, live see. stream or just talking and uh, hanging out? I think a mix of both. Okay. We'll, we'll see. But he just invited you. No further details. Just. Be Not online. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice. Taste testing for voltage isn't it no. twice. <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe, maybe you do it once uh, then. Man, I remember uh, I went into <laughs> uh, yeah, high school, college mix mm -hmm. uh, we're having here in Austria for electronics and yeah, information technology together. And yeah, we had to work in our holidays. Uh, uh, internships. Internships, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Had and at one point I was uh, yeah in another company close by and in an electric service team, and they sent me to rewire something with dc voltage 50 volt dc mm -hmm. so yeah and i asked him did you cut all the voltage everything off and he goes yes really yes and it it was it was the master there it was the, the chief of the electricians mm -hmm. uh, did you really do it yeah okay uh, i had a bad feeling already <laughs> and i was i was going there and starting to wire these things up and I touched it with the screwdriver and it bass screwdriver so, flew right off well no it flew, flew not, not off but i got got a real a real hit on it but anyway how no you have not cut it off and he was yes i have I said no it can't be well just do your job and he went off again okay and I, started doing the wiring on a, on some other stuff went back over there Bass! again was taste and i went to him so now you do it <laughs> and then it tasted him and obviously he hasn't uh, put out 
everything. So yeah, okay, I'll take out trust no one. <laughs> yeah, trust no one. Ah, uh, yeah, fun times. <laughs> Sorry, need to put the phone away. We'll see if he comes to the stream. Hey, Krenna. Oh, yeah, there he is. Hi, Krenna. <laughs> hey, buddy. Thanks for joining. So you didn't miss the premiere because there was no premiere. We're just talking today, yeah. <laughs> tonight. But yeah. we filmed the video. And that one will be out tomorrow, Saturday. Yeah, you want to put it out before the stream, right? We'll put it out before the stream. It's just, yeah, my experience with plucking on this guitar. So, uh, yeah, yeah I can, I don't spoil too much when I'm on last stream. If he's asking about my, yeah, kit build. And, yeah. and you want to talk about this guitar? If he asks. Yeah, well, if it comes to modding, this one's the most modding and building you've did. Yeah, obviously, yeah, so all all the work I put into it I had to set the neck so that one is glued in, and yeah, that work was quite some work on it, mm -hmm. and it the f so much for spoiler, uh, the the plaking I did was because the original threads in the kit wore down already considerably oh so that's why i i did you hear a rattle or something buzzing yeah i've, heard, I've started hearing rattle and i've noticed how the threads already got dense from just not really much playing actually i've played it quite a few times when okay. when when i built it and it, you know it played good so yeah that was not really a problem but it soon started to get really notches in there and yeah i already thought from the beginning maybe i would like to have stainless steel threads on that one and yeah so it got on to that i've decided to do a black job with the stainless steel refret yeah. on it so yeah also did Poon ninja's leaving crowning it's gotta go bye bye Poon. Poon. thanks for joining us did you all turn up the Vox yet? Um, no. <laughs> because <laughs> when, when Martin showed up, uh, my wife just put our girl to, to bed. And so we couldn't crank it yet. But we want to do so as soon as possible. Yeah. And we want to compare it to the... I have the Blues Junior, as you guys m m uh, probably know. And it also has a... 12 inch uh, green bag and 15 just watts. like the box just like the box and this one also has 15 watts and a green bag but it's just the, the cabinet is a lot bigger and we want to see which one is louder which one <laughs> and we can't do that in the evening because it's uh, i don't know 105 db probably more that's certainly more that's more that's more 115 <laughs> yeah i think we need to check because i bought this Thing. This DB, yeah, where you can where you can measure the DB, and maybe then we have be two meters away from the amp and so and test how loud they are. I would guess, or if I have to predict which one's louder, I would say it's the box. But we'll see. We'll see. The the Blues Junior can get a lot of high end also through it. So that one might uh, yeah. we, we be yeah. more prominent on the DP meter. Yeah, then maybe we'll put so we'll, we'll down see. a bit. An ISO Krenna box says build. time for an ISO box build. What is that? That's an isolation box you put around your Ah, pads for recording, for, for recording cranking. And cranking. Ah, yeah, I, I think... Uh, I think Phil mentioned it on his stream that he puts it in a closet and yeah. mics the amp and he doesn't have it in the room, uh, Phil McKnight. Maybe that would work as well. Yeah, the problem with the basement is that uh, if there's too much 
uh, ottomans it's you, you can really feel it <laughs> yeah it's not that the walls are shaking upstairs but it's noticeable unless you're going with the JTM crank well then everything's shaking through the 2 by 12. Lucas has a steel helmet in here. Yeah. <laughs> and that thing rattles like crazy when we when we're not even cranking it. <laughs> it's, it's just it's going nuts. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but only on certain frequencies, right? Yeah. yeah. A couple of notes and a couple of frequencies make it yeah. shake. Yeah, isobox or uh, the the ox for twelve hundred euros, <laughs> but that's the uh, yeah premium solution. You were considering <clears throat> an, an a torpedo or an ox at some point, right? To use the, no, the JTM two uh, notes torpedo. No, 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 not the two notes torpedo. The not the ox box. Try it. That's just an attenuator. No, it's oh, uh, actually it's it's a power amp. You go into another one hundred watt amp that you that is very clear, and mm -hmm. you can reduce the volume and uh, okay. just go on very low volume out of it. And and yeah. that's no longer on your list. <sighs> well, it is and it isn't. Maybe, maybe some day later. I don't really have the current need for it. Yeah. So, yeah. Krenna said the Oxbox is all about looks as well as being an awesome piece of gear. Did you try one at 42 Gear Street? Henning must have five probably <laughs> in every <laughs> studio. <laughs> or just a huge app switcher. He has that one. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. To dime the volume of the tube amps, I just have a rather affordable solution. That's the Bugera Power Soak. But it's, yeah, we noticed that it changes the sound. Darkens it up it, a little it, bit. Yeah, it just takes a little bit of the high end off. It's, it's really when you AB it, you try to get, yeah, you, not the similar volumes, but if you, if you just, have this in between uh, the the amp and the speaker. It's to a certain degree it changes the sound, it darkens it. And so I'm I'm I still haven't decided if I want to play the blues junior because it's pretty loud with the master volume down, or if I want to increase the master volume and use that one because yeah you can. Adjust the volume on it. And I said they had the two notes kept direct. Ah, okay. Yeah, I was thinking about that one as well. That one has the IRs in it as well. Ah, yeah. For recording? For recording, yeah. Would be nice. Yeah, but it's pretty expensive. I checked. Six, yeah, the Fred is more expensive. Okay. That one costs, I think, 1,200, 1,300 or something like this. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, you need to do a lot of recording to justify that. Yeah, I hope our drummer gets back soon. Away again? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so always abroad. Yeah. <laughs> so he can finally record for for a song with recording. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. True. Still on his to do list. <laughs> So, should we wrap it up? I think we've been streaming for a bit more than an hour now. Or Are there any more questions? Questions, comments, suggestions, anything? Criticism? Criticism, of course. That's but something... constructive, please. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to have some construct uh, constructive criticism. criticism. So... Yeah, we can improve. If we don't don't hear what we are doing wrong or what you would like to tune improve your guitar, us, <laughs> improve us on. That's, yeah, that's a running joke because it's on the one video where we played 
three guitars and the comment just says tune your guitar and we were just say which one yeah. <laughs> oh, but never mind we usually tune the guitars we yeah. always, always tune the guitars but, yeah we should probably eventually do it between takes as well Put yeah. something up and put it aside get it always back. tune it again yeah yeah maybe wouldn't but hurt that's something we are lazy at, yeah. Admit it. <laughs> All right. I think we yep. uh, end with today's stream. There are Thanks still a, lot. a couple of guys here, but yeah, it has been a lot of fun. Thanks for participating. Thanks for talking to us and yep. with each other. It's been a lot of fun. Um, we want to do this once a month. Now, yeah, we try to not do it on the same day as uh, Five Foot World, obviously. Yeah, and so we're always try to be one week after, so it might be always the th third Thursday in the month or something, something like that. Something like this. Yeah. yeah, but we will put the put it on uh, two days in advance always before we do the stream. Yeah. So yeah, thanks again, but uh, guys, have a great evening, have a great day wherever you are, and see you in the next stream. Bye. Bye-bye.